My guest today is Matt Eland. Matt, how are you today? I am doing good. I'm having uh, fun on a Monday. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you because uh, although we've kind of chatted before, we actually physically met for the first time just a couple of weeks ago in Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, uh, I really enjoyed your talk on uh, data visualization, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun to, to see people. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was fun to see people. Exactly. <laughs> it was fun giving that talk, too. I haven't been to uh, uh, very many conferences lately. So. <laughs> um, and now, what do you do for a living, Matt? So I teach uh, software engineering at a 14-week programming boot camp in Columbus, Ohio, called uh, Tech Elevator. Uh, specifically, I teach C-sharp, JavaScript, SQL, all of that good stuff, really making full-stack developers. And uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and you were, we were talking about what we were going to talk about at the show, and you wanted to talk about learning because you are a learner and you're a teacher, right? Yeah, so I uh, I love to learn. I'm not sure how long it took me to realize that I love to learn, but I, I, I love to learn, um, and I love to help other people learn learn how to learn. So that was kind of what got me out of software development because uh, I've been programming with .NET technologies really since 2001. And okay, I discovered, really nice. uh, yeah, since uh, since beta two, it didn't get beta one, but I got beta two um, of C sharp. And uh, uh, since then, I've been teaching, and I, I well, since a couple of years ago, I've been teaching, and I love it. And just seeing how people learn stuff and enjoy the stuff that I love, um, I found that I love that even more than I love programming. Yeah, um, and you, you you said a phrase, learn how to learn. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Well, you think that that learning is about sitting down and listening to someone really smart talking. Uh, and a lot of our students come in and they think, okay, well, learning is something that the teacher does to me. They are taking the knowledge out of their head and they're sticking it in mine. And by the time I'm done with this lecture, I'm going to have all the knowledge I need. Sounds uh, very and, passive. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, and there's an, there's an aspect of that of paying attention, but that's really not everything that's that's related to learning. That, that's a good way of learning concepts and maybe seeing something done the first time, but it's not really everything you need to, to learn. As I can teach somebody what a for loop is and all the little pieces and parts of a for loop, but until they sit down and they try to figure out how to skip every other item or loop through something, um, they're really missing like that application part of, of the learning process. So there's a lot of different components to learning of understanding what something is, being able to work with the tools yourself, being able to, to troubleshoot all of these, these problems that might come up with compiler errors or, or anything else like that. Uh, um, uh, and even uh, going on and figuring out, okay, well, do I really want a for loop or do I want a while loop? So, so like these these higher level approach, like what, uh, what approaches uh, should we take to, to, to solving our problems? And beyond that, you know, how do I build something bigger with all these little pieces and, and, and things that I've seen I understand all of these things, but I don't necessarily know how they fit together. So yeah, so they there's can, a lot of they can memorize things. everything that you've told them. Yeah. And still not be able to write a program because they have yeah. to make these decisions. Yeah, there's this misconception that learning is all about just memorizing a set of things or having a, a note card or having something you can refer to on Google. And certainly, you know, every time I, I I want to work with dates in JavaScript, that's the time that I'm going out to Google. How do I work with a date in JavaScript? Uh, I've done that many times. <laughs> Every, every time, time actually. Yeah, every time. <laughs> uh, or I go out and install Moment.js, uh, and it, does, <laughs> it takes care of it for me. But, uh, um, you know, there's 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 an aspect of of learning that's knowing where to go to look for things. Um, there's an aspect of learning that's knowing that something exists. Uh, for example, when I'm attending a conference, a lot of what I'm looking for is learning of new things. Um, for example, I, I remember I, I went to see a session on a time series uh, analysis in, in Azure, and I didn't even know some of these tools existed in Azure that could I could use for uh, machine learning or drilling into the, 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 these things. And I didn't need an in-depth talk on it, but I needed to see that something was there so I could investigate it more at my leisure and really just start to understand it more. So I think there's a lot of different aspects of learning um, from knowing conceptually what something is to knowing how to get started to knowing how to troubleshoot something or um, how things fit together. Um, and there's an okay. aspect. Yeah. There's an so, aspect so, you know, so you know what the um, the the things that the memorization is not enough. You know, there's some concept, mm -hmm. concepts that need to be memorized. How does that help you as an educator to get that across to your students? 
Well, students, uh, I can't tell you the number of times I hear, especially in the first few weeks of, of our program when we're just teaching the beginnings of C Sharp or Java, um, the students will say, Matt, I, I feel like I understand this in lecture. I feel like I understand what a class is. But when I go to try to do my homework, I just don't know what to do next. Um, and I, I tell them, look, look, this is this is like Matt's gym, right? You are, you're building muscles here. <laughs> Some of your muscles are understanding. But some of them are learning how to structure a program. It's learning mm -hmm. how do I push through this problem? How do I build something this way versus that way? Um, and it's okay to be to be weak. You're going to get stronger as you practice. So I think there's there's an active aspect of learning where you're going through and you're building uh, building out projects, um, ideally with some support from somebody who's more experienced and who's is has built something like that before or or, or can support you if you get stuck. Um, so I think that, that having that safety net is important. Um, yeah, I like, I like that metaphor, building a muscle. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, software development uh, is a muscle. Writing code yeah. is a muscle. And if Absolutely. you don't exercise it, it atrophies. It, yeah. it, uh, you're, not, you're not born with that ability. And just trying it one time is often not enough. Yeah, and your first time in Visual Studio or VS Code or whatever IDE you're using, it, it can feel like you're sitting in the, the pilot seat of a jet airplane, right? And you have all these yeah, things all around. all around you and you don't know what they do. and uh, uh, you try to code your first method, and and you get this uh, not all code paths return and return a value, and you're like, what? what, yeah, what that's that that's mean? helpful. What does yeah. that even mean? <laughs> uh, you see a load letter. Yeah, what does yeah. That even mean? It, it really is just like that. And uh, people forget how much your brain shuts down as soon as you see a compiler error, really early on in the process, and you really do need that support. Um, and one of the things I'm passionate about, and I try to advocate as much as I can, is trying to make our tools better and better for new people. And I, I believe that the, you know Microsoft in particular is really starting to take that uh, to heart as they keep advancing the, the C Sharp language and our, our tooling around that, uh, really all of .NET. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, some of the major initiatives around .NET 6 were related to helping new learners learn. Um, I, I, really, I really like that. I think we have a, lot, a long way to go, but I really like that. Because we have these. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do appreciate that. Uh, don't don't do too good of a job where I'm out of work, but you know, uh, I, I do okay. appreciate. I do. I'll tell them to slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, but no, we we have this language that's been around, or these tools that have been around for 20 plus years now, right? 20 years of .NET is what we're saying, but it's even longer than that with the betas. Um, right. And every year we add. A yeah, well, twenty-year anniversary is coming up, actually. Like, oh, you know, I, I, I saw all the promotional materials. I yeah. kind of assumed that it was a, uh, it was like about now, but uh, yeah, okay. Um, but we keep getting like ten new features a year. It feels like to C Sharp and .NET, and it's great, and it keeps it relevant. Like, I couldn't have imagined coming into programming that I would be spending most of my career with like, the same languages and tools. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that they keep evolving and morphing. Right. But one of the problems with that is that. As we keep growing these new things, we now have all these different ways of doing something. Um, for example, when you're teaching properties in C Sharp, uh, the person has to learn not only the normal way of doing it, but the arrow function way of doing it. Uh -huh. They have to be familiar with like, there's like a 12 different ways of declaring a property in C Sharp right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so they have to learn the syntax of, of many of these. They don't have to learn all of them. But the thing that they ask themselves is, Okay, well, which should I use? What's the right one to use? What's the right one to use in this circumstance? And it's this, it's all this extra baggage that we're trying to simplify for people to so that hey, just focus on this or this, you know. Um, and I think with learning anything, you forget that you're jumping into this big pool and you're trying to drink all the water at once, and that's just not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to figure out like what's a good place to start. Do you ever struggle with the idea that not everyone has the same learning style that you do? I've seen some things around about like different learning styles being myths and that we all really have about the same. I'm not sure how much I buy into that, but I don't think I do. Yeah. Some people uh, learn by uh, uh, watching. Some people yeah. more learn more by reading and some people learn by, by doing. And there's people like me that I kind of need to do all three. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm definitely somebody who learns a lot by watching. And then I apply it and I solidify it and explore it by doing. Um, we try to do all of those things uh, with mm -hmm. our students. You know, they are watching us uh, program. Um, they're trying to follow along sometimes. If it worked well for them, then they're they're following along as we are coding in lecture at, at, at Tech Elevator. If it doesn't for, or it work well for them, they're just watching us. And they can, uh, in a remote world, they can actually go back and watch the recording, which is great too. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, but 
one of the great things about having them trying to do stuff while we're in the room is that they if they get stuck, we can help them out, right? right. Um, so there's an aspect of watching. There's an aspect of you know doing something on your on your own with some support. And I think people people learn well from that, but not everybody learns the same way from the same you know, the same approaches, right? Um, some people learn really well by reading a book in advance, and so we try to cater, cater to people like that. Um, one of the things I've been finding is the more I vary my teaching style, uh, the more helpful I tend to be to the class overall. Um, over the last year, I've I've found the importance of, of drawing on a screen in a virtual environment can really help some learners. Uh, hmm. And that was not something that I tried a lot of uh, initially. Um, but just being able to draw visuals and, and draw pictures out helps people. Uh, I also find that injecting humor into things can help. Um, I, I teach I teach with a lot of memes, uh, especially when I'm, I'm letting students go on breaks, um, because you forget how intimidating all this is. Yeah. And the brain has a couple different key modes to be in. It's got this focus mode where you're actively trying to solve a problem that's the near, near the front of the brain, um, and you're really trying to apply. Okay, well, how do I do a for loop? How do I how do I execute on this specific task? And then you have this diffuse mode, which is where your thoughts are a little bit less focused and things are kind of flowing around a little bit more freely. And that's when you start to think high level, big picture approach. And one of the things we tell our students is, you know, back off, take a break, you know, get out a rubber ducky and <laughs> talk to the rubber duck and tell them, you know, what the, what your problem is. Um, and you actually humor, have an actual rubber duck. <laughs> that's that's for my that's for my brother. But we actually do give our students rubber ducks. Uh, I'm not not even lying. Explain to you. The, for those that don't know. Explain the rubber duck so, process. Well, rubber duck process is if I have a compiler error or something else, I'm I, I'm not sure what the problem is. I try to explain it to my monitor to, or to a rubber duck or to the dog or my wife or whatever. And more often than not, as you're explaining the problem to somebody and, you, and you're walking through the steps, you start to actually rule out some things or you start to entertain or challenge some ideas. Um, you start to kind of throw away a little bit of your confirmation bias just by explaining something to somebody. Yeah. Um, and so, so we'll often, often, yeah, yeah, we'll call we'll call over a coworker and say, "Help me with this problem. I don't understand what's going on. It's totally broken. I'm totally dumb." And then, as you explain it, you realize, yes, without any input from the other person, yeah, <laughs> that uh, you figured the problem out yourself. And it might as well be a a piece of rubber standing there instead of another human being. <laughs> or, or they'll say, "Oh yeah, well that's weird. It really should do that." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, watch." And then you do it, and it doesn't do the thing that you were describing. And you, <laughs> and, yeah, and you shake some sort of a, uh, a mistaken conception. But ah, David, yeah. I can't tell you how many bugs I've solved by waking up in the morning or driving to lunch or driving back from lunch or, you know, my, my evening and morning. Just meeting. disconnecting from it. Yeah, or taking a shower, you know, like all of these things, like your, your, your brain goes into the, the diffuse mode and you start to challenge your assumptions. Right. And so teaching our students how to do that is a really important process of things as well. Hmm. Uh, it's just, it's amazing the way the brain works um, and, and the, the, the way that you can get fixated on something and have this confirmation bias uh, that uh, uh, you might not even be aware of. Uh, so you, for example, if I finish a major feature and I, I think it's good, I might spend a little bit of time testing it, but I'm hoping that it's going to to pass my my tests, right? I'm not, I, I want to move on to the next thing. I don't necessarily want to go back and fix a bug. Um, right. When I was managing a team of, uh, of developers, um, my mantra that I taught them was spend 15 minutes trying to break your code. Just spend 15 minutes actively trying to break your code. Best thing is that happens is you break your code and you find a fix for it before somebody else does. Right. The worst thing that happens is you've wasted 15 minutes, but you have a better feeling about your code. But right. you need to move into this, this mode where you're kind of gamifying trying to find something. Where you, right. you're trying to get past this, oh, this is good, this is ready to go, and move towards this, this is not good, Where's, what's the problem? Right. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get into that mentality. We've talked about how uh, you teach mm. uh, in, in response to the students, but uh, give us some advice for people that are learning. What, are this, what can the students do better? Uh, so number one thing that I think people struggle with uh, is attention. You know, mm. when, you're, when you're learning, you want to make sure you can focus and pay attention uh, mm. to the concepts. Um, be able to to give your active focused attention to something. Um, one of the things I learned as a bachelor student was it's important to not write down everything. Uh, I don't need to write down every major concept that the instructor is teaching. I need to write down maybe a few key things. 
uh, and that, that number of things might be maybe five in a given lecture or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just a few key points to look into more. I, I do better personally uh, focusing on what somebody says. Now, somebody else might do better trying to follow along or they might do better um, asking questions. Um, people need to get okay asking questions. If that's how you learn, uh, asking questions is very, very good. I'm always very thankful as an instructor when I get a question from somebody. Even if that question is just, Matt, I think I understand this, but can I try to explain it to you? Right. Um, often trying to, to restate something to somebody else is going to help you solidify the concepts on your own, uh, clarify any misunderstandings that you might have, or even point out entire missing pieces. Um, it's what I like to do when I'm joining a new team is I, <laughs> I like to say, so, okay, I think I understand your applications and their, and their relationships, but let me explain it to you and I'll draw a diagram and somebody will tell me of some process or system I didn't even know existed. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Uh, and one, not to be afraid to ask questions. Yes. And then also to give them something to start with to validate, to say, mm -hmm. instead of having them explain everything, say, here's what I know. Tell me where I lack, uh, you yeah. know, what's either wrong or missing or whatever. Then it's, then you can be very specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, learning, learning is hard. Um, so you need to be, you need to be ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Learning, uh, I think learning is the best and the worst part of yeah. this business. It's i I'm excited to learn new things, but it's a challenge. All my skills are obsolete every three years. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's an overstatement, of course, that, but that's, that's <laughs> true. I was a, uh, I was a silver light specialist for a while, so I, I can relate <laughs> with that comment. <laughs> I was the, the XAML part still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I, like, I like XAML still. Though. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Well, we could talk a little bit about machine learning if you'd like. Um, yeah, well, I'd love to hear. Uh, so if we talk about human learning, yep. are those concepts the same when a machine learns? So uh, I, as, as just for added context here, I am a, I am a master's student or an incoming master's student uh, going for uh, data analytics. Um, oh, congratulations. Uh, master's when, of when do you graduate? Uh, probably summer of 2024. My first class is Monday. So <laughs> oh, oh, you're just starting. Yes, just starting. Um, but I've been doing a lot of independent at, at Ohio State. No, uh, Franklin University in Columbus. Okay, okay. lots yeah. of universities in Columbus. Lots one, of one big one, lots of little ones. Yeah, <laughs> lots of little ones, lots of good ones. Uh, it's a good community to be a part of, honestly. Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, I, I, Colum I've been to Columbus many times. Great tech community there. Yep. Um, but I've been learning a lot of about machine learning just to prepare myself for that, so I could both right. teach and learn at the same time because that's going to yeah. be a challenge, right? Um, and you have to find the materials that work best for you. Uh, one of the things that I found that's worked well for me is I, I'm able to put a couple hours of focus time every evening into learning, uh, mm -hmm. whether that's something through Microsoft Learn, uh, which has some really great free content out there, uh, mm -hmm. by the way. <laughs> a lot of it's for certification prep, but even if you don't take the certifications, you get to learn a lot uh, of things. Yeah. Um, there's some great stuff on Coursera as well. If you're more into active learning or courses where somebody might grade, grade things. Um, and yeah, then I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of Pluralsight also. Yep. And I just, I'm taking a class now with a company called, I think it's called Credly. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's a soft skills class, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and for all kinds of yeah stuff out there. I, I, one of the parameters I look at for my own health is if I'm not learning something, there's probably something wrong. You know, right, right. Uh, I just, I enjoy it so much. Right. Um, and as people are getting into software engineering, one of the questions I ask them is, is how much do you like to learn? Because if you, if you're going into this field, you're, you're, you're going to learn or you're probably going to get fired at some point. Yeah. Uh, you, if you don't like to learn, it's probably not a good field for you. Yeah. Because it changes so rapidly. It does. Um, it does. And so we teach you how to get into tech and we teach you how to learn. Um, but we're trusting that no matter where you wind up, you are not ready for that job day one. You're just ready to learn that job day one. <laughs> and that's true of any, yes. or, any university, any program, any, anywhere. Um, just so many different workplaces are, are unique. We've come full uh, circle. We're talking about learning how to learn again, <laughs> which is where we yeah. started. Um, but as for machine learning, uh, computers learn completely differently than humans do. Um, they have perfect memory, though it's a little slow sometimes to load things into memory. Um, and a lot of machine learning is based on historical data. And so with a computer, with a human, I might have to tell the same person the something five different times with a computer. I give them a, uh, you know, 50 megabytes <laughs> of data and they find the relationships between things and the relationships that I might not even have realized were there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the 
real advantages of machine learning is that you can work with a really high volume of data and you can give it to a, a machine learning algorithm that's been trained on this model and it's going to be able to, to to find relationships between things and maybe predict uh, some 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 sort, of, some sort of a numerical or categorical value. Um, right. So, you, uh, for example, I was uh, I'm an night owl, and I, I spent some time once de developing a regression algorithm to predict the amount of minutes I'd need to spend the next morning to scrape off my particular car in my particular parking spot in the morning. Um, so I spent a lot of time training that. I had to give it a lot of historical <laughs> data about uh, weather and how much time I had to spend scraping off my car in the morning. Um, but once it understood those, those parameters, it was really well calibrated to predicting the amount of time I'd need to spend in the morning scraping off my car. Uh, in my parking spot. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> yeah. So really a silly project, but it was helpful for me to get an extra five minutes of sleep on, on many more. <laughs> uh, uh, very cool. Yeah. Um, but projects like that are great for learning. Excellent. Are you doing, um, you have any more speaking engagements coming up? Yeah, I have a couple more. Um, I, I co-lead the Central Ohio.net developer group. I'm giving a talk uh, near the end of this month on uh, ML.net and uh, applying machine learning to predict uh, ESRB <laughs> ratings for video games that have not yet been released. Just sort of mm -hmm. a way of teaching um, ML.net. Um, I'm giving a talk on data science at the Columbus uh, AppDev user group, I think on the 21st uh, of oh. this month. I think oh, I month. think I said that's uh, Sam Bass's group, right? Yeah, yeah, Sam's off. Awesome. I spoke there last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, that's a that's actually the the group I gave my first talk at years and years and years ago <laughs> uh, on uh, Windows Phone development. So yeah, excellent. Uh, it's it's been is a while. Your, is your group virtual? Uh, we are going for a hybrid approach. Uh, we've been virtual for the last two years. We're going for a hybrid approach with recordings or streamings. So um, uh, the Central Ohio or sorry Columbus App Dev group is virtual still. Right. Um, and then I'm doing one virtual with Sensi ML. Um, I think on ESRB rating as well. So oh, I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, down in Cincinnati. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, I have a couple ab abstracts out for submission at uh, at Star Trek, which I often like to speak at if I can. Oh, it's a great conference. Yeah, that's my home conference. I love that. Considering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. This has been really interesting. Thanks for having me. The thing I love about teaching uh, technology to people is that I get to see people come into technology and learn new things and get excited about the things that, that I learn uh, that I've learned to love. And I get to see these people really come through and enjoy that same stuff. And by the time they're done, uh, by the time I'm done teaching them at our 14 week program, um, they're, they're honestly friends of mine and uh, they get to go on and learn new things with new technologies that I'd never even encountered before. And I get to learn new things just by remaining friends with these people. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons I became an educator and one of the reasons why I love uh, teaching technology.